Welcome to Your Ink Story, a podcast exploring what humans have in common through the stories behind the body art folks wear. I'm your host, Andy Lyons, and I hope these ink inspirational short stories sharing the heart behind tattoos fascinate you and leave you feeling more meaningfully connected to humanity. This is season one, episode eight, and you'll find an abundance of inspiration from our guest, Christian Thomas. A former inmate turned personal trainer and online coach, Christian's remarkable ink stories remind us that regardless of our circumstances, we have the power to rewrite our narratives, define our identities, and inspire others through our journey of self-discovery. Welcome to your ink story, Christian. I'm so delighted you're here to share your ink story. So excited to be here. I can't believe this is happening. (laughs) (laughs) I'm thrilled that you're here too. Before we get started, please let folks know how you glow in the world. And that means what's making your heart sing? How are you delighting others with services? I know you're a fitness trainer, right? Yeah. So I started my own personal training business in 2019. And it's just been growing from there. I'm currently training out of Kicked Up Fitness, 114 National Business Parkway, and also in Baltimore, Maryland. If you ever want to come stop by, come check me out. Um, So fitness has really been my passion. It always has been. I love working out. I'm the type of guy that will do a thousand burpees, a thousand pushups, and an hour for fun. That's fun to me. Yeah, I love fitness that much. So I'm dedicated to it, and I'm excited to help you find a passion for fitness as well. Oh my gosh, that's outstanding. That's a phenomenal soundbite. Everybody, you can find anything and everything you need to know about Christian Thomas in the show notes. There'll be a link to his guest page with all the ways that you can connect with him online and learn more about his incredible fitness business, Royal T Fitness, right? Yes, ma'am. That is it. (laughs) And folks, a little sidebar before we get started. Chris Jen was crowned as the sexiest male poet in the world for 2023. Yes, yes, I was. It was a poem I did. uh, It's called Pain. I did it this year. And I'm going to be in a magazine soon in 2023. I think next month it's a church magazine because I'm a spiritual man. So I try to put that image out there. I'm a very spiritual man. And I got the poem going to be coming out on my website as well. Oh, congratulations, Christian. And I bring that up because we love to see something being fully expressed in the world, using your words, using your body, using the mind, everything to stay on purpose while sharing your gifts with the world and helping others be their best and fully expressed. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Well, let's begin with your origin story. Here on Your Ink Story podcast, we're all about the stories behind folks tattoos because we know this is a great way to find connection how we're so alike in many many ways versus looking at everybody as how we're divided how we're different and so talk to us about your first tattoo what compelled you to put body art on your body and <laughs> and get something permanently inked and let us know where let give us all the details christian all right, absolutely so i've been inspired for tattoos when i was in germany i used to live there for about eight years and in the high school there there's a lot of diverse individuals and in my school in vilsack everyone was kind of like tatted so that was like the thing in high school if you were tatted that was in the girls is on you you was just the cool guy around campus basically (laughs) type of deal so i wasn't able to get tattoos in germany because i had my dad he was kind of strict so i was a military kid so my dad he's old school so he's against like tattoos and he's against piercings so no tattoos and piercings for me you know what i'm saying so when i moved to the states around 2013. I I was in high school. And then when I turned 18, that's when I'm like, okay, now I'm 18. Can't really say much now to me. So I went ahead and I got my first tattoo. It says respect right here. 
neck tattoo, obviously probably not the best choice. <laughs> to 18 put and you got a neck tattoo. Yeah, a neck so there's tattoo. no hiding this from dad. There's yeah, no exactly. hiding this from anybody. Take that everybody. Yeah. So at that point, when I got this tattoo that year, I feel like people were very judgmental about tattoos and they would kind of categorize who you are as an individual, especially if you had neck to tattoo, like a lot of jobs didn't like it. And There's they were just- people think you're affiliated with a specific group or a particular right. group or a gang yeah. because you have this tattoo and not exactly. that it means I want respect and I'm going to put it out there on my neck so yeah, I can get some respect. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like respect runs the world and it's a certain level. And I, I had the mindset where you're not God. So who are you to judge who I am? You don't even know me from Adam or Eve. I'm the nicest guy you probably ever meet in your life, but you're going to be afraid of me, assuming that I'm someone I'm not. So come speak to me, get a second opinion to, instead of just looking at an image and just assuming, because I'm not responsible for your assumptions of me or anything you and see. Your, and your biases, right? Exactly. Yes, exactly. So that was kind of like my mindset when I got respect. Because that's what it's all about at the end okay, of the day. Okay, so I have to ask, your first tattoo on the neck, cursive writing, right? <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> Where did you get numbing cream? Were you scared? You... Nah, I was ready. It was actually at my neighbor's. This tap man, he came over. I just told him I want to... It was just right there. I just picked what I wanted just right then and there. I was like, I want this on my neck. Respect. I didn't even think about it. I was like, just, yeah, right on my neck. And he did it. Didn't hurt. No. I don't use numbing cream for any of my tattoos. I feel like you got to just take the pain because pain, the part of tattoos is pain. And just like in life, you're going to deal with a lot of pain in life, but it's overcoming the pain. So I view tattoos as a symbolic metaphor of what life is all about. And we all have our own, you know, meanings to what we, how we perceive life is, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So that's my outlook of it all. Absolutely. And that says a lot about the person, your tattoo artist, who did that for you. Because I watch a lot of TikTok and the tattoo artists are like, okay, you're 18 and you want me to put something on your neck. Don't you want to think about that for a minute? Right. Yeah. He did say that, actually. He's like, you sure? Are you watching that? I'm like, yeah, just go ahead and do it. And I love your boldness. And listeners, please chime in and comments, either in the Instagram feed at Tell Me Your Ink Story or pop a voicemail via the website and the mic in the lower right-hand corner or a comment on the website. We want to know from wherever you're tuning in, what your thoughts about being that bold and putting a stake in the ground saying, Hey, this is it. I'm going to really force you to confront your biases about me by putting this word on my neck so you can see it because I don't want you judging me by any of this. I want you right. to dig deeper into my truth. And the way for me to show up truthfully is I got respect on my neck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's how I viewed it. You said it right. <laughs> Woo! And, and I got, Chris, I got to ask mom, what did she think? Oh, she, she is a little upset, but she was excited to like, not excited, but she said she liked it. I'm not going to say she was excited. She just said, okay, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> she didn't think it was the, the best choice for me to get it on my neck, but it's done now. So <laughs> that's what we do in life. We have to live with our choices. So right. I decided and to live with this choice and I, I stand behind it. it still to this day. I haven't got any negative feedback from it. Maybe some looks, but you know, maybe it's some other type of looks. I don't know. I'm not a mind. You probably got more fist bumps than anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a lot of compliments on my tattoo. Every day it's probably like five people be like, where did you get your tattoos from? Who does your tattoos? I feel like I'm marketing <laughs> my tattoo person guy <laughs> at this point. So Well, we'll get all the info on that. So as you start to move into adulthood, with mm -hmm. your wonderful first origin tattoo, did you begin having more? Because what I'm hearing is that once you get started, you're like, oh, I want another one. And that is exactly right. So I got one and I looked at the rest of my body, as you can see. And we're going to have pictures because Christian's yeah. going to send us pictures, right? He's got almost like, full sleeves going. Yeah, I was like, I had to get more. I can't just stop. It was funny because 
All my friends, each week I would have a new piece and I got all my tattoos piece by piece. And I just kind of thought about it, what was going on with my life. And then that's when I put it together. You know what I'm saying? Nice. It just all came together and it was weird. It's subconsciously, the placements of how they came just came subconsciously. And I didn't even know till later on certain pieces meant a deeper meaning than what I originally thought from when I first got the tattoo. I love so, it because, you know, the divine led the way for your tattoo journey. Yeah, it, it did. And the ideas are just flowing. Like I, I have a creative passion. I love to create new things, whether I'm speaking, writing, working out. Like I love to just find something new, do something new because it's exciting for the brain. I love psychology. That was my major in college. So I'm all about psychological things and Psychology basically runs the world. It's in our marketing. It affects your behaviors. So everything is psychological. Even algorithms. Yeah, algorithms. Yeah, absolutely. Especially algorithm. That's the, our patterns and habits are the biggest benefactor. You know what I'm saying? Right. To, I absolutely do. Yeah, so. And so having that as a core skill and an education is key for life. And when you get that degree in psychology, you're going to be able to communicate and understand your fellow humans a lot better, whether it's marketing, your business, or in the world, period. So tell us a little bit more about the art as it started to form on your body. As you look on your sleeves, what stands out? Share a couple of your favorite tattoos that are so meaningful and you're like, wow, I didn't know this was going to be meaningful when I had it done, but today it's really helping me. That's a great question. So my first one helped me when I was incarcerated for about two years. It says, keep faith and it has flames to it. And when I was locked up for two years, I was falsely accused when I was going through this time, at first I thought it was just cool because it was just like, keep faith, you know, with the flames. I always love flames. And, and you had this put on what, when you were in college and you were working hard and playing basketball? Yeah, this was, and yeah, and I was playing, yeah, I was in college playing two years in basketball. I had two jobs. I just turned 21 and I got my dream car, Mercedes. And then I was supposed to graduate year 2017. And then I wrongfully accused. I was locked up by a federal government and I was supposed to play basketball overseas. And they just kind of took, not kind of, they did. They took all that away. I had my family in pain and my brother was locked up and incarcerated too. And he still is. And we're trying to get him out, not trying, we're going to get him out, just looking for that right attorney for appeal. So and if it anyone all, tuning in knows a good justice attorney, yes, please reach out to Christian please Thomas. Because yeah. you need him out of there and it's not right. And yeah. I'm not the type of guy that thought I'd ever be locked up a day in my life because I'm not in the streets or not even saying people that are in the streets, but I just know who I am. Like, I'm just not that type of guy. Right. So it, it was really shocking to me that I would be locked up at 21 while I'm in college, ready to graduate and continue my journey. But it got put on hope, but I'm not using that as an excuse. So I came home, thank God, I kept my faith. And now I started my own personal training business. And it was hard at first. I was at UPS, started as a package handler. And I worked myself up to a supervisor within the six months of me being there. And I was doing supervisor and then personal training. And then now I'm just doing a lot of Good personal training, and online coaching. And you can sort successfully as a founder, as an entrepreneur, much faster than with UPS. Right. And, but how amazing this keep faith. So the keep faith was basically, so this is like my, me staying onto my, my face and my beliefs, my God, my angels, and just believing that they'll be here with me on this journey. And then the flames was a representation of my demons that are trying to hold me down and keep me in this negative mindset and basically want me to quit in a sense and lose my mind. So it was basically me overcoming my demons that were that I was facing in that moment. Isn't so, that amazing? Yeah, I figured that out when I was locked up. <laughs> so you're looking you got a lot going, of time you know to think, you know, in a cell, 23 And you're hours. looking at your sleep going, you know, I really do need to keep faith. And the thing that's really going to be the block to doing that are those flames right there. And yeah, oh my absolutely. gosh. And meanwhile, when you got it, you were like, hey, I like that idea. I yeah. like that 
that stencil looks great. Put it on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my tattoo artist, he does free hand. So he'll get a pen, draw it on you and then he'll tattoo. He doesn't, he doesn't have oh. a computer. And can uh, you, you know, share his name? Yes. Zilla underscore tattoos. He's booked. So you, you got to get him early. But if you refer my name, Christian, he might can see you a lot faster. And he's reasonable. He works with you. So excellent. And to, to find a freehand tattoo artist is really something that shows the level of talent that yeah. he has. And what's his first name? His first name's Kimon. Kimon. Thank you, Kimon, for being so extraordinary and sharing your talent with the world. Big shout out to you. Yeah. And we will tag Absolutely. him on the Instagram reel for sure. And Absolutely. and make sure he's acknowledged in the show notes as well. Because listeners, the tattoo artists, right? It's copyright. This is their art. Even if they used a stencil, they had to do the ink and the needle and put that beautiful design on your body the way it looks. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure we acknowledge and we do the shout outs to the tattoo artists and their studios and their incredible artwork. And yes. so as you look around your body, what else inspired you, especially when you were not just in lockup, but when you came out, because as you obviously know, being incarcerated is traumatizing. It's like the yes. ultimate PTSD. Yes, a thousand percent. Like you definitely have to have a strong mind and mental strength. You want to keep yourself busy, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if you're not, then you you really just lose your mind. So I was in there reading. I was in there writing, drawing. I cut my own hair. Like I learned how to cut my own hair. Like I was finding out so many talents about myself in a crazy way. It, it sounds crazy, but being locked up actually taught me a lot of things. It brought out the greatest version of myself. It helped me notice skills that I didn't even know I had. And I'm able to utilize into today's reality. So, and I'm, and, COVID 2020 was kind of like the same thing for a lot of people in a way, because there were some people couldn't stand being in the, the house all day. Right. And they had to do something. So they started figuring out some other things about themselves and learning some new ideas and or figuring out bad habits that they fix. That's you know? right. Or relationships that weren't working anymore. Exactly. Because so, they didn't have the distraction from leaving the house. And that's what, when you are locked up, and especially if you have to do, as you said, the 23 and one a situation, you are forced to get to know yourself really well exactly. under very harsh conditions. And, and I'm really grateful that you were able to reframe what happened to you as wrong as it was. And as bad as it is, and so it, the injustice is so horrible. And mm -hmm. then for you to come out and be able to say, all right, I'm going to take this and work with my trauma voice, right? Because that's always going to be there, maybe not as loud as always, and reframe this to an understanding of between the writing and the drawing and the internal work you were forced to do in order to keep your faith. Yes. and manage your demons, you found a truer version of yourself that now in the world, if you'd gone off to play basketball, you would have been having some good times yeah. and it been a lot of fun. But now you know so much more about yourself and therefore you're bringing so much more of yourself to us. Yeah. And it, like I said, it sounds crazy, but being locked up actually was in a way a good thing for me. And, you know, I... A lot of dudes said that, that I talked to that was locked up. They said being locked up was kind of good for me because if not, I'd probably be on the streets dead right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I learned a lot more being inside, you know, to help me grow. Because to me, life is about change and growth. And right. if you don't want change or growth, you're going to still be the same. And you're wondering why the same current events keep happening to your life, because you have the same habits that you failed to recognize. And if you don't, things aren't going to really change for you and nothing's going to get That's better. That's right. Yeah. I, one of my favorite people in the world, he was incarcerated at the age of 17 and he looked around and he said, I don't want to be that guy 20 years from now. Mm. And he taught himself computer science without a computer and has gone on to have a very successful life because mm. that contrast moment. He said, no, that's not 
nope, I'll get through my four years here and then boom. But I'm glad that you are out and that you are supporting your brother in getting through this incarceration and getting the injustice brought to light happening for him. Let's talk about a few more of your tattoos because we're oh, all yeah. curious here for ink absolutely. stories. Yeah, so absolutely. what's another favorite tattoo? So this one is my other favorite. This so, is on Christian's left shoulder. Left uh, shoulder, sure. yeah. Yeah. This right here, it says powerful beyond and then greatest measure. I'll be sure to send you a picture to get a better look. But, right. And then we have. Is it, what's the image in between though? So we have the Mayan pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have what is called the Eye of Ra. Yeah. So like I said, I'm a very spiritual being. I believe I love Egyptian culture. And the Eye of Ra is a symbol of magic and power. And it also wards off any evil spirits or negative energy that may enter your life. So it's a very positive symbol. I, I put it red because red is also a powerful color is symbolic of power and with the lightning because i don't know lightning and thunder is yeah. you know very powerful as well so and it's empowering power. yeah it's a power thing and then i have the mayan pyramid right here so this is a symbolic representation so the mayans back in their time they believed not me <laughs> that they would sacrifice human bodies to their god so the sun god which is the eyebrow and the guy would bless them with rain or whatever they wanted. So my belief on this is that you have to make many sacrifices in life for what you believe in. So you're going to have to give up some things that you don't like to do, but you have to do to reach the next level. You know what I'm saying? So you have yeah. to have form a discipline. So that's where this tattoo comes involved with the mind and the eye, but the powerful beyond greatest measure, it came from something else. So when I was 17, I was very spiritual. I still am, but I would do a lot of meditations and I would just come up with these certain sayings just randomly. So I was with my friends one day and I would just told them like, I'm powerful beyond greatest measure. I said that to him, right? The next week, one of my friends, he was just skateboarding and there was this piece of paper in the street, right? And he picked it up and he came to me and then he was like, yo, check out this paper. He read it already. And I opened it up and the paper is, it's like thick piece of paper and it looks like it's kind of old. It looks old, but it's like new. And on it was in bold letters and it said, I am powerful beyond measure. And I found out years later that this is in fact a poem and it's also in Coach Carter. I don't know if you've seen Coach Carter, but he actually said this same poem, I am powerful beyond measure. My deepest fear is not that I'm inadequate. My deepest fear is I'm powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness. It's a powerful I am statement. So listeners, whenever you put I am before something, it really yes. helps you embody. It's not like I will down the road or I'm going to. It's I am powerful exactly. beyond measure. And right. folks, I don't care where you are in life, what your privilege is or isn't, that is a statement that will help you achieve the dreams. And what you just got done talking about, Christian, is so true. In order to achieve and have those great feelings, you have to make those sacrifices nice. and have the mindset that says, I am powerful beyond measure. Exactly. Because as Muhammad Ali said, whenever he went into the ring, he said, I'm the greatest. Because what, exactly. what's he going to say? I'm not? Yeah. If you're going to yeah. go into the ring of life, you got to be feeling good, even if sometimes you're shaking in the knees and, and quivering in the voice. That's the beauty of your tattoo. Yes. Law of attraction. If you don't know, that's what it is. What you think about comes about. And your words are literally magic. They're spells. You're basically casting spells into the world so be well, careful what you say yeah be careful what you say but don't use it to beat yourself up or or have right. shame you want to use it in healthy ways which is you knowing that you're putting out your words and your thoughts with the best intention possible with grace for those days when you are so human 
yeah. that you're going to fail. We can't be upbeat all the time, but if you can exactly. hold on to those words during the tough days, they really do get you through the tough times and on the other side. Right, yeah. Christian? Yeah. It's so easy for us to have a negative thought. It's so easy for us to think some negatives about ourselves, but why not think something positive, you know, and make it happen? You know what I'm saying? So it's so easy to say, oh, I can't do that. But what if you can do that? Then what happens? You know what I'm saying? Then what happens? So just try to. What if you do win? <gasps> yeah, exactly. Right. Hey, <laughs> what if you do win? Like keep that and you keep that same mindset, then the intention, then the actions will show. Is that's how it, it goes. It's not easy task. Easier. No, said. it is not. And anybody who's have ever had to overcome some big mountains in your life, you know that it was the flames and keep the faith was happening a lot. Yes, <laughs> because, that's like an everyday thing, really. <laughs> that's really just is. life in general. I feel like it is. And so the choice is: Do I want to approach it with positivity and not toxic positivity, folks? This is with honest positivity, which is with the understanding that we're all frail human beings and we're doing that's the best right. that we can. We're all on the same team. Oh my gosh, you must be the best personal trainer ever. When are you going to start doing videos so we can all buy your videos and get trained virtually with just, you? I'm going to start right after this. I'm <laughs> making a video just for you and everyone else right after this. And how about one more tattoo before we wrap up? Because this is so exciting because you're very ins uh, inspirational. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to show this one for all my anime <laughs> fans out here. So this one is Goku. For all the Dragon Ball Z fans out there, so this is Goku right here. If you don't know who Goku is, he's basically like a superhero. He's a human being, right, just like us, but he's tapped into certain abilities and himself to be able to fly, to be able to Excellent. shoot magic power out of his hands. And listeners, when you hop on over to Instagram to tell me your ring story, or if you're on the website, you'll see it with the episode for Christian thomas that it's on his left calf right yes. yes yeah yeah it's a symbolic meaning it basically teaches you about not giving up overcoming obstacles that's what it's basically about and tapping into your truest self to reach your greatest potential that's kind of like the gist of the story and that's why billions of people love dragon ball z Goku that, and that's true. I get a and lot folks, of compliments on his tattoo. <laughs> and what I love about that too is that no one's saying you need to stay in an abusive situation. You can still pursue your dreams, even if what you might be pulling on that thread right now is not working and your energy might be needed elsewhere. You are still focused on the big picture dreams, which is mm. bringing again your full expression to life, who you really are, uncovering and discovering your talents, your unique expression, whatever that looks like. And sometimes we don't even know, we just get started. And yeah. these tattoos that you've shared, Christian, are just so beautiful for Thanks. that inspiration. Thank you. Which is, folks, it's hard. But guess what? We can do hard things. Yep. Yes, we can. <laughs> to quote Glennon Doyle. Yes, we can do hard things because it's worth it when you get past it. And anybody who's had a tough workout, you know, on the other side of that workout, you go, dang, I feel really good. You feel good. Like I did that, you know, and you go about your day. You might have some ice cream later, but hey, you did the workout. <laughs> you did the workout. You took care of your body. You stayed strong mentally and physically. This has been such a wonderful conversation, Christian. Yes. And I know everyone's going to be excited to get to know you better and see all your tattoos and follow you everywhere you glow. And I just have one final question, though, and that is how do folks respond when they see your body art? Well, they're actually kind of shocked. I remember when I used to work at 7-Eleven and I was a cashier at the time and there's multiple people that come up to me. So this lady, she was like, I don't even like tattoos, but I love your tattoos. That's great work. And mainly speaking, people love this one at the time. It's strength with roses. So they oh really God, love that. Oh, here you go. Strength yeah. With roses on it, black roses. Oh so my gosh. They Gorgeous. really 
they really enjoyed seeing the whole thing. <laughs> Everywhere I go, people's like, who's your tat man? And my Zilla underscore tattoos, Kimon, the guy tat did like basically 90% of my body. He's like, yo, did you do like a marketing campaign for me or something? I'm like, nah, just people keep asking me where I get my tattoos done. So people seem to love them. I know I sure love them. So and I don't care if they love them or hate them because it's, it's for me, not you. you and know? Christian, did you have all of these tattoos done before you were incarcerated or have you had some of them done after? So most of them were before. This is kind of the new one that was after. Oh, hold on. It's like, hold on. Here we go. Forever. Uh huh. On, okay, everybody. That's on his right inner bicep. Yep. And then Forever. got free right here. Oh. So this was kind of the one that was after, along with the Goku one. Yeah. So this is basically like I'm forever free mentally, physically, and spiritually, no matter what, after I got locked up. And the moon are the phases of life. Like we, we go through so many phases of life. So that's what that's all about. Oh my so, gosh. So liberating. Yeah. So in that's so how many I, ways. Thank you for that. Thank you for these stories. Thank you for carving out time with your generosity to share these beautiful ink stories on your body, but more importantly, they're inspirational in the truest I love that. form. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's nice. my new favorite word. Inspirational. Yeah. I had to use that. that. That rolls off the tongue. That's slick. I like it. <laughs> and they have insights not only to you and your own personal journey, but mm. for any human exactly. walking this planet. These yeah. are the challenges that we're faced. We have different incarcerations and different lockup that we yes. struggle with. Um, and that's the beauty about the art of your tattoo and the heart behind your tattoos. We are all inspired by you, Christian. You've helped us connect more deeply with each other with this wonderful conversation. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Andy. I'm inspired by you because I've always been wanting to talk about my tattoos. I don't think you understand how excited I am to finally just get my message across to those who want to listen, you know what I'm saying, or want to hear, because we all need some inspiration. It might be inspiration, like you said, to someone else, or somebody can inspire me from what they do with their tattoos, Absolutely. whatever their work is, you know, in their life. So this is really exciting. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's an honor to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for listening to this episode of Your Ink Story. Please rate and review this podcast wherever you are tuning in. And if this episode inspired you, please share it so we can all feel more connected through our common humanity and lived experiences. If you or someone you know would like to share a meaningful ink story on the podcast, please send me an email, andy at yourinkstory.com, along with a brief description. Feel free to share your thoughts about this episode via a voicemail message by visiting yourinkstory.com. And when you get to the website, just tap the podcast mic icon located in the lower right-hand corner of the screen and leave your message. Until next time, I'm wishing you a delicious day everywhere you glow. Cheers. <laughs>